Okay, so uh, let's talk about all of the huge Yu-Gi-Oh! news that just got dropped on us earlier today in Konami's Yu-Gi-Oh! Digital Next live stream presentation. There's a lot to unpack, so we're just gonna kind of go, and I honestly thought I might just like switch this, like, like cut this up into multiple videos, but I'm gonna try to just talk about it all here. So, um, Konami did this presentation, they talked about four different Yu-Gi-Oh! games, and um, yeah, we're gonna take them one by one, but the bulk of this conversation is of course going to be around Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, because that's kind of what everybody's really excited about. Alright, so first things first, Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duel, Psycho Battle, this is actually a game that has been sort of known about for a while. It's a way to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duels, and I actually think that it looks pretty exciting, because it's the first Yu-Gi-Oh! game in quite a while that has sort of an overworld type of thing going on. So you do play as a like 3D avatar, run around a 3D world, talk to people, and play games. Other than that, though, the actual simulation looks similar to something like Legacy of the Duelist or Duel Links or anything else that you would expect. You get to play the game, and I think that's obviously very exciting with Rush Duels. Um, it's a new way to play. They're obviously targeting younger players. It's exclusively available on the Nintendo Switch, although I can see that changing in the future. They might bring it to, you know, other consoles and things like that. This is neat. Um, I think it also sort of implies that Rush Duels will, in fact, be released in the West, in, you know, Europe and the United States and North America in general, all that stuff. Um, if only because... It would be strange for this game to release and that not to exist. So the game comes out in August, I believe, in Japan. So just like next month. And um, in America, we're going to be getting it in the fall. That could be October or November or something like that would be my guess. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. It looks like it's great. I obviously recommend people give it a shot if you're interested in that. But the next thing is uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links getting... Arc 5's world added to it. I believe that's something that will be happening, you know, maybe August or September. I think last year it got added in September, so that seems like that would be the the thing for Arc 5. That's when Zexel got it, so pretty cool. Um, this is probably the least exciting thing. Like, it's very exciting in that, like, you know, if you're a Duel Links player, getting Link Monsters would be, not Link Monsters, Pendulum Monsters, that'd be really cool. Great, you know, we've gotten Xyz and Synchros, so that's interesting if you're into that, but the star of the show here is Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Ah, so many thoughts on this. Don't even know where to start. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel was actually alluded to uh, at the tail end of last year. And so now we finally have gameplay that we got to see and a bit more information. So this is supposed to be a way for people to play the official Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG or OCG, I guess, if you're a Japanese player. And... That's really exciting. That's what we've wanted for a long time, is just a completely official Yu-Gi-Oh! first-party simulator, and that is what this appears to be. Something, the very first thing, really, that I noticed with this game, incredible, incredible production value. Like, it just looks great. Like, honestly, it looks even better than something like Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, which already impressed me quite a lot with its appearance, this is not, you know, Legacy of the Duelist, where they have kind of the not great looking simulator. It just sort of shows the cars and it moves really slow. It seems like their goal here was to really have it be a nice presentation. So we get these 3D sort of duel arenas. That's really awesome. We like have our decks and everything. It's sort of like the cards seem to be almost like floating on the arena and that looks kind of cool. Um, we saw HD graphics, actually 4K graphics, that's really exciting as well. And this is going to be available on a bunch of different platforms. You can play it on PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, Xbox One X. You can play it on, like, you know, the PC, you can play it on iOS, you can play it on Android. And that has a few implications that I'll get into in a second. But, um, yeah, the production value looked really, really good. Something that actually excited me a lot that people have been talking about a lot on social media is what appears to be like a pet or mascot system. So we saw a lot of sort of cute and cool mascot monsters that could be on the side of your duel arena. Um, that Some of the more exciting ones was like there was a pot of greed, there was what looked like a Borlo dragon, there was a rescue cat, or I actually think it was rescue rabbit. 
So that's a really neat feature. That's something that I know a lot of people will like, you know, the ability to have sort of a mascot, probably a Karibo, a scapegoat token. Seems like there's going to be a mix of new stuff and old stuff and iconic stuff and obscure stuff. Another one that I saw that I really liked was World Chalice um, Guard Dragon. I thought that was very neat to see. So, um, yeah, it's one of the cute monsters. I think they'll have a lot of cute stuff. They'll have a lot of cool stuff. That could be stuff that may be unlockable or purchasable, which we'll get into the whole purchasable thing in a moment. Um, and the fact that this game is available on so many different platforms is very exciting to me. That seems to imply that there will definitely be cross-play, and that's something that I definitely want in a game like this. If this is going to be, you know, the way that you play the official Yu-Gi-Oh card game, then it only makes sense that, you know, I can play with a PlayStation user on my Android phone, or an iPhone user can play against someone on the Xbox. Um, hopefully it's just something where, you know, you have one account, and it's shared kind of between the different devices, so you can maybe even sign on like, if you want to play on your couch in the big screen TV, you can play on your PlayStation or whatever. But then maybe if you just want to play it on your tablet or your phone, you can also play it on that. Honestly, playing it on the tablet, to me, seems like it will probably be, like, the perfect experience. I played a little bit of the Pokemon TCG on um, the online one on, like, my iPad, and I found that to be, like, just the right sort of screen size and presentation for me. You can, of course, play it on your phone, and I think that'll work for plenty of people. But the fact that it's so easy to access is really cool. And I also think that because it's going to be on all those different platforms, it's probably going to be a free-to-play game. So that brings me to my next really big point that we all want information on. The monetization structure. Specifically, how are we going to get these cards? It's the big question, right? If this game is free to play, that is to say you can just download it completely for free on like the app store or whatever, then there's got to be some monetization structure in place. I know with games like Legacy of the Duelist, because they were on consoles exclusively and they had like a story mode and stuff, they did have a price tag. It's 20, 30 bucks, however much Legacy of the Duelist costs. This is different though. They have been pretty clear that this game is like just a simulator it's not like kind of a character duel anime duel game it's you get to play the tcg so that means it might be free to play like free to download but konami's gotta get their money somehow and does that you know mean that we'll have to buy cards outright i don't know there's a few options that come to mind for me though so um the first Thing is probably something similar to Duel Links, where maybe you can grind for cards in game somehow, maybe by grinding online matches, maybe by grinding against computer players, something like that. And of course, you would have maybe the option to purchase gems, which would be like the premium currency. And then by using gems, you could open packs and get cards. It's interesting though that they didn't actually show any packs being opened, they strictly showed gameplay. And normally, whenever like they announce these new Yu-Gi-Oh games, they will show, you know, like somebody opening a pack and getting cards. So that could mean then that you maybe just have to kind of get the card individually, but it might also mean that the card pool will be completely open to you at the start. I know that seems unlikely, but there's like a chance of that. If Konami wants this to be an eSport for Yu-Gi-Oh, which is something that I'll kind of get into in a moment, um, but if they want it to be something that's like, you know, just for hardcore TCG players, then it's possible that, you know, they could have that card pull open and perhaps monetize the game in another way. Like, something that people have talked about for a long time is a subscription service. And not gonna lie, I wouldn't hate that. I think that paying, you know, $4.99 a month, like, let's just say that's the price. I'm not, I, I don't know anything about this. It's all speculation. It could be less than that or hopefully not more than that. But... I think I would pay like $5 a month to just have access to all of these cards and, you know, on an official, you know, high production value, nice looking Konami supported simulator. Because in addition to the, the fact that, you know, you have access to the cards and you have access to online play, there's even going to be events for this. And so, like, I think it's crucial that people can quickly and easily get their decks built and if they make all the cards available, then people can do that. But then 
if all the cars are available, I don't know what people would be spending money on. There are some other things that they could monetize though. For instance, that pet system. Like I said before, that's something where, you know, that's it's a cosmetic thing. So being able to maybe purchase, you know, a new mascot, a scapegoat token or a rescue cat or whatever as your mascot is something that I'm sure people would be willing to pay for. And they could have that as like a gotcha system, loot box sort of deal. Um, they showed custom card sleeves. That's definitely something that I know people really like in existing, you know, online dueling solutions. So there's definitely something to be said there. That could be stuff that's offered as prizes for winning events. That could be stuff that's like you can win in a loot box. Um, that well, the second one seems more likely. This is Konami. They want their money. So um, there's going to be some type of way that they are going to monetize this game. I don't have a huge problem with gems and like getting cards that way through packs. I know it's annoying. And I'm not saying it's the best solution or that I hope that's how it goes. But here's the thing that people do need to realize about all this. We pay for cards in real life as it is. So obviously it would be nice to be able to like transfer your physical collection of Yu-Gi-Oh cards into this game, but that's not like technically possible to do in that way. So there's gotta be some way that you get these cards. If you're not paying a subscription fee to have access to everything, then maybe they, you know, make you pull the cards through gyms. Maybe they take a Pokemon type approach where they start putting like codes in physical Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG packs and you can enter a code into the game and then get a pack, a version of that pack in game. That's how they do it with Pokemon Online. And, you know, it works. People do it. They use it. So, you know, there's a lot of options here and I want people to kind of, I guess, stay a bit open-minded in regards to just all of this because people have to get paid. I mean, they're developing this game and it looks really good. They've been talking a lot about, you know, the special effects and, you know, some of the 3D animation. And I think all of that looks amazing, but real developers had to make this game and they have to get paid somehow. So as much as it would be nice to just have all of this stuff be completely free, you got to pay something somewhere. I mean, that's just the reality of business. So I know a lot of people don't like hearing that, but it is the truth. So what would you be willing to pay? That's something that's interesting. I'd love to hear about that in the comments. Okay, next let's talk a little bit about this whole events thing with this game because they have, you know, said that they want this to be like, they're, they're going to be tournaments in game. That's awesome. The fact that you can play with people just in, you know, regular PvP is cool, but if they're going to have tournaments, some type of league system, there's so much they can do. Rankings and leaderboards sound awesome. Individual tournaments sound awesome. If they can support alternative formats, that would be really cool, especially if there are tournaments for said alternative formats. I might be getting ahead of myself, but it's a possibility. Um, this is neat. I mean, for people who can't necessarily go to locals, don't have like a card shop near them, or aren't able to travel to regionals or YCS events, this could be huge. And specifically when you think of like, you know, the YCS type of events, technically like a limitless amount of people could enter these. So that means that a lot more people get uh, a way to compete and like these tournaments can have just many, many more players than even a normal YCS can have. It could be like thousands and thousands and thousands. Um, I mean, I'm sure they would have like some sorts of limits to those. I don't know how like that would necessarily work with like dates and times and all that, but it's there. And I think that this all is sort of in the service of making Yu-Gi-Oh! like an eSport. Because Hearthstone came into the scene in like 2014. And it, you know, has been a very popular game. And there have been other card games too. Some have come and gone, some have managed to stick around and stuff. But I think that Yu-Gi-Oh! is threatened at this point by, you know, both the Pokemon Online Simulator, Magic the Gathering Arena, all of these games that have, you know, just these really nice, polished, official, like, online simulators and can run their tournaments that way in the changing landscape that they mentioned in that video, Yu-Gi-Oh! needed this step. It needed to catch up. Even if COVID wasn't around, I think that this was kind of going to be an inevitability. People want ways to play easily and quickly on their phone, and I think that makes it accessible for casuals, but it also could be the future of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! I think it's a much more marketable thing in that way. This is a game that will look really nice on live streams. 
um, really presentable. There can be an easy way to, you know, showcase like <clears throat> what's on a player's field and in their hand and in the graveyard. And you can even maybe like spectate it as a viewer or, you know, as a commentator, like it allows for more dynamic commentary. There's so much this offers for competitive play and for esports and like for content creation around it. It's definitely something that I'm really excited about. I think that like with Team APS, we can make loads of content around this game. And I think loads of people will be doing that. So seeing Yu-Gi-Oh! as an esport, it, that's cool. All the effects, all that stuff. Although I hope that those can be maybe disabled for like some online play if you don't want to have the effects on, but who knows? Um, yeah, I think that that is going to be kind of big. I think that that will bring Yu-Gi-Oh! into the esports realm and maybe more can come with that. Maybe there can be, you know, more dedicated like esports teams and like pro Yu-Gi-Oh! players finally. I don't know that Konami will be offering cash prizes still. That still kind of seems like something that they're usually opposed to. But who knows? Like, there's definitely a future here. And I think that as, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how is this going to interact with the TCG. Like, the physical TCG, I mean. Um, I, I know a lot of people thought that maybe the OCG and the TCG would be, like, melded together here because it would maybe seemingly be the same format. It seems, though, that on closer inspection, the Japanese version of this presentation and the TCG version of this presentation use slightly different footage, actually. So in the Japanese version, you can see Max Z being used, whereas in the TCG version, that footage is not there. So it seems like there will be separate formats by region, and I think that's going to be meant to effectively separate the TCG and the OCG. But it still makes you wonder, will these be up to date otherwise? Like, will they get new products as new products are released? When Dawn of Majesty or Burst of Destiny or whatever new set comes out in the TCG, will it be available in this game on day one? If it is, that's incredible and a huge deal. If it's not, that already sets this game kind of far back. So, if it seems to be the dedicated sim that they are implying that it is, it's just kind of for the hardcore player, I think they will, and I'm optimistic about that. But, um, yeah. And another thing is, like, you know, how will it affect, like, the sales and accessibility of the TCG? Why should I go to Locals if I can play this online? Why should I buy packs if I can just get my cards on here? Obviously, as a Yu-Gi-Oh! player, I mean, I always want to have some physical cards, but I'll be the first to admit, it can be rough even having physical cards sometimes. I've got loads and loads and stacks and stacks and stacks of, like, commons and boxes and stuff, and for some people that's really cool, but for me, it's annoying to store all the cards. Maybe it'd be easier to just have a card bank and library available in this game that I can play. I'm not as sentimental about simply owning loads of cards. For me, I can maybe just have a few of my favorites that like are in a collection in a binder or whatever, and I can get by on that. And so obviously that's not going to be for everyone, but I do think that it's just something kind of to think about. I wonder if Konami has factored that into how it's gonna work. That's why I think that like the Pokemon booster pack code thing could be like, sort of a good way to bridge those two markets and allow people to feel like there's a benefit to buying packs still, but also, um, you know, it supplements this online game. Who knows? And, you know, the fact that they're going to even try to have this as like an event at the next World Championships means that it is serious business. Like, there's real, you know, notoriety to be gained from playing this game. So there's a value proposition there. I just wonder how the, the physical and the digital will affect each other. Um, another thing we're talking about is how is this going to affect the other Yu-Gi-Oh! online simulators that exist? Uh, the main two big ones being EDO Pro, of course, and also, um, let me turn this light on. Ugh, wait. Okay, yeah, so... Um, EDO Pro and Dueling Book. So these are games that are, you know, like online sims that are fan-made and they've existed for, you know, years now. There's a lot of tension surrounding what happens to them. Does Konami go after these games and sort of forcibly shut them down because they would be operating in direct opposition to Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel? Or is it kind of a matter of, well... 
you know, people maybe just migrate to these games. I actually think it's the latter. Like, I think that when Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel comes out, EDO Pro, Dueling Book, they're going to have a hard time. I don't think Konami actually has to lift a finger to make these games sort of start to feel the heat. I know what people are thinking. Well, I'd rather play those games for free and like be able to build whatever decks I want and play with that stuff than pay evil, greedy, co-money, all my you know hard-earned cash on gems or on a subscription or whatever. Why would I do that? I can just play Yu-Gi-Oh for free. And you probably think that, but I'm going to tell you the hard, cold truth of it. When your favorite content creators are playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, when it first comes out, because it gets views and it's shiny and pretty and exciting, and people are watching, you're going to want to play that platform. Because, you know, Farfa's playing it on Twitch, and he's dueling against viewers and subs, and you want to play against him, right? But to do that, you gotta have the game, right? That's how it's gonna go. With a lot of the major streamers, Distant Coder, MBT, all these types of people, lots of Yugi tubers are gonna be playing this. It's probably gonna be how deck profiles are shown. It's probably gonna be how highlights and combos are shown. And as people migrate to it and the interest is there, I genuinely believe that these other games are just going to kind of get a little scarce. There won't be as many people, you know, on the lobbies and on the servers, and the mainstream sort of player will have access to this as well. So a lot of times as a Yu-Gi-Oh, just as a creator, I get asked all the time, like, when people want to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh, well, how can I play? Like, is there like a game I can play? And right now I can't really recommend them Legacy of the Duelist. It doesn't really have updated card pool. I can recommend them Duel Links, but you know, that's Duel Links, so it's got kind of the condensed rule set that not everyone is interested in. But I can recommend the Master Duel. It's official. It's by Konami. You can download it on any platform you want. You don't have to go into a CD Discord server to download a program. You don't have to go to some obscure website called Dueling Book and like, you know, do all that. And you can only really do that on a browser. You can play this on anything. iOS, Android, you can download it on Steam. Play it on any console. Cross-play. It starts to look a lot more attractive. Fancy effects, you know, cool little mascot things, 3D fields, custom sleeves, all the content creators are playing it. You want to play it too. So I think that The Sims, the other simulators, are going to feel the heat of that. So it's kind of unfortunate because a lot of hard work did go into making things like EDO Pro and Dueling Book like the product that they are but i think that their time is going to be limited whether konami presses them or not and last but not least the release date so while we got release dates for uh the rush duel game or, or release windows rather fall 2021 um and we know that the arc 5 world will be added to duel links probably in september this game did not get a release date i'm guessing that because it's still in development it's probably just going to be kind of a dynamic rolling release it could be this year. I would hope that it is. It's a sim, so I don't think that like there should be loads of development needed there, and they kind of need to get this out. So my guess is late 2021, but it could be as early as 2022. So um, who knows? I am excited. And then last but not least, let's touch briefly on that Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross um, Duel game. It's supposed to be a four-player game. That's all they really said is a, a new way to sort of play with four people. At first, I thought that could be like a tag duel thing where it's like two-on-two -two duels, and I do think that could be a feature here. But it sounds like it's going to be a game that has sort of a battle royale component, and I think that that's actually pretty smart of them because many sort of more, especially the more casual crowd, likes the idea of like a free-for-all duel, like a battle royale. And actually, in I think some of the recent animes, it's either Arc 5 or... Zexel Arc 5 or Brains. I want to say it's Arc 5. There's like a, a scene where it's like a, a free-for-all kind of four-person duel. And that's something that a lot of like more casual players are really into. Just the idea of kind of like everyone sits around a table and just plays in a free-for-all. So the rule set for that would obviously be a little bit different and maybe need to be a bit dynamic. 
So I can see why they would make this a separate thing. It seems like it's only available on iOS and Android. It seems like it's like gonna just be a mobile game. So it probably is more of like a side project. Um, I don't know. We'll get more information on that soon. That's all we can really say. But overall, this was a really cool presentation, something that I really liked. I like this kind of Nintendo Direct inspired way of just showcasing information. I'm guessing Konami did this because they weren't able to show these games at E3, so maybe they didn't have quite enough available to show, they were comfortable showing at E3. But making their own little short video was cool. I mean, honestly, hearing a Tim's voice, right? Dan Green, that's awesome. Um, and it it feels good. It, it feels exciting. I, I'm hyped. I'm, I'm really quite just like overwhelmed with what this means for playing Yu-Gi-Oh! It modernizes things so much, and I think that they need to get these games out as soon as they can, get us more information as soon as they can. When they do, rest assured, Team APS will be involved. We will be playing these games, we'll be making content, we might be doing some streaming, we might have a, a whole channel for it. Who knows? There's just no telling. And um, I think that people should be excited too. We should, of course, you know, hold your... Like, hold your breath a bit on, like, the whole monetization structure of Master Duel. I know that's the big question that's up in the air. When I, if, if and when I find new information, I'll, of course, share it with people and I'll share my opinions. Uh, who knows? But anyways, that's what I think. Uh, I've definitely gone on for quite a while with this video, but there's just so much to cover. And I want to know everyone's thoughts on everything. So, let me know what you think of, you know, Rush Duel, Psyche Battle. What does this mean for, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s and Rush Duels in the West? Let me know what you think of Arc 5 being added to Duel Links and how that changed the dynamic of that game. Let me know what you think of Master Duel and whether or not you think it's going to cost money, what the payment structure would be, you know, will it be free to play? What does it mean for the esports scene and like, you know, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh as a whole, tournaments, results? What does it mean for the other simulators? When do you think it's going to come out? And what do you think of, you know, this cross like battle thing? That seems kind of neat. It's obscure, we don't know much about it, but I want to hear. Let me know down in the comments. I'm excited. I'm going to be reading all day. So, yeah. Been it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Past turn.